Given an array of integers with n plus 1 numbers in it, ranging from 1 to n, there's only one repeated number in this entire array. How can you find it without modifying the array and only using constant extra space? Hi everyone, and welcome to another mock interview with Exponent. I'm here today with Ahmed. Would you like to introduce yourself before we get started? Hello everyone, I'm Ahmed Khalid. I'm a software engineer at Google. And yeah, I'm happy to be here. Lovely, happy to have you here as well, Ahmed. Um, so today we're doing a software engineering interview question. And the question for you is, given an array of integers with n plus one numbers in it, ranging from one to n, um, there's only one repeated number in this entire array. How can you find it without modifying the array and only using constant extra space? Okay, so the input for this question is an array of integers mm -hmm. uh, starting from 1 to n. Uh, and I'm required to return this element that's repeated in this array, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. So what I'm thinking about is the brute force solution, which is iterating through all the array two times. The first one is iterating through every element. And the second time is comparing this element with all the other elements in the array. And if we find the duplicate, we can return this back. OK, so first, let's start by uh, creating the, the method that we will be using, which is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have the array and we will be doing two for loops. The first one is looping through all the elements in the array. Mm -hmm. And inside this for loop, we will have another for loop iterating through all the elements again in the array. But starting from okay. this index, because we don't need to be repeating uh, comparisons more than one time. Yeah. So we'll be starting from i plus one until the end of the array. And if the first element is equal to the second element, then we found our duplicate. If not, we will continue our for loop. Mm -hmm. And if we finish the for loop without finding any element, I believe we should return some invalid uh, value, like negative mm -hmm. one, for example. But this shouldn't be happening according to our. Yeah. Uh, let's assume. Let's assume you always have it for now, and then yeah, that's that's not a problem. This is. And here is that we found the our Okay, so this is the first solution, and I believe the time complexity here is n squared because we have two for loops, mm -hmm. and the space complexity is o is o of one because we basically didn't use any space. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then let's say if we want to change the time complexity here and improve it. First of all, what is the time complexity right now and how would you improve on it? Well, the time complexity right now is O of n squared, where n mm -hmm. is the length of the array. And yeah, it's not the best. I think that the second solution to improve the time complexity is sorting the array and comparing every element with the element that's after it. But this will only increase the time, uh, will improve the time complexity to n log n, okay. which, is still, which is still not the best solution. I believe that we can reach the a linear time complexity with O of n. OK, I see. How would you, could you implement this for us? OK, so first of all, to, to reach this, I believe the, the easiest solution is to use a set where mm -hmm. we address through all the elements. And whenever we reach an element, we check if it exists in the, in the set. Mm -hmm. If it exists, then it means that we already found another one that's had the same value. Okay. And this is the duplicate. If it doesn't exist, we insert it in the set. 
to yeah. make sure that when we find it again, we know that it exists. But okay. as you mentioned in the in the in the problem that we can't use extra space. Mm -hmm. So here is the tricky part. We already know that the elements starting from one to n. So we can use the array itself as a set or as okay. a hash set. Okay. So how we will be doing this is iterating through all the elements. And whenever we find an element, we go to its index or the index that it, that is equal to its value and we mark this element as visited by yeah. basically setting the value as negative the value that exists right now okay let's try that okay so we will only have one for loop instead of two for loops so let's mm -hmm. remove the second one and for every element sorry, uh, we will be checking its index so first let's calculate the index mm -hmm. Here the index needs to be the element minus one, but the element might be visited before, so it might have negative value. Okay. To fix that, we need to get the absolute value for this element. And since the, uh, the elements from one to n, but the array is zero based index, so we need to uh, subtract one to be from zero to n minus one, not from one to n. Getting the absolute, of course. Mm -hmm. So this is our index. So first we check. Is this assuming that all the numbers in this array are in a given order? It doesn't have to be in a given order. It can be in any order. Okay. So if this index is less, th uh, less than zero, then we know that we visited this element before. So we Got can it. just return the element. Okay. Other than that, we need to mark this element as visited. So we say a roof index mm -hmm. go to negative array. Okay, so here we iterate through every element. We calculate the corresponding index, which is like using the hash function. Mm -hmm. And for this index, we check if we visited this element before or not. If we visited it, so it's a duplicate. If we didn't, so we mark it as visited. Okay. Can we try testing this code and seeing how we can use it? Okay, so. We can have an example. Let's start with a simple one. Okay. Mm -hmm. But to use this function inside the main, since the main is static, so it had to be also static. So here we have an array that has values from one to n, where n is four, since we have four values. Uh, and the duplicate here is obviously uh, two. So let's try to run it. Mm -hmm. So the duplicate is found. And there are some edge cases, for example, if we have this duplicate, but for multiple times, for example, if it's like this, so here we only have one duplicate value, but it's duplicated for more than two times. Yeah. And I believe it will also work. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I think this looks good. All right. I think this looks good. Thank you, Ahmed. That was great. Do you have any suggestions for you know how how people should tackle questions like these when they see them? Have you ever gotten stuck on a question like this in an interview? And what was your strategy around it? Well, I think the, the the thing that people mostly get stuck on is starting with the optimal solution. And mm -hmm. I believe this is not the right strategy to have. The right strategy to have is to start with the brute force solution and try to improve it. 
not starting with the optimal one. Yeah, that's fair. You always want something on the board um, rather than nothing and no no complete yeah, solution before yeah. the end of that interview. Exactly. Yeah. At least you can write some code to see how good you can write the code. Yeah, exactly. Thank you very much, Ahmed. Really appreciate having you here today. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.